Before we go on to look at how we can actually draw our drawings and put them into our, our GUI, we need to talk about one more element of how we can kind of get a form of interaction into our GUIs, and this is through bindings. So we've talked about the fact that we have all of these things that are uh, properties. So our selection model, for example, is a uh, is a an object property that is it's basically something that wraps around an, an object. And if we were to look in the API, we would see that. In fact, if I type in property there is a whole package for different properties that there you know you have a number of different types boolean double float integer long uh, there's a string property there are also things called observables and there are a number of places where we've actually hit things that were for example observable lists of some type these collections the key thing about the properties and the observables is we've already seen they have methods like on change um, we use that when the user selected something from the tree. In addition to that, they have the ability to be bound to one another. So one of the things that I'm unhappy with in our current program is the fact that this tree here does not conform to the, uh, to the container around it. Basically, it has a fixed size and it always stays that size. And I would like it so that at least it attempts to be closer to the size of the container that's around it. So how can we do that? Well, the drawing tree happens to have a number of different properties that are associated with the width and the height. I actually want to use the preferred width and the preferred height. Now the thing about the preferred width and preferred height is I'm not going to use an equal. These are, this is a double property. Okay, so it wraps around a value for a double. It would allow me to do things like on change, okay, so that I could react when it changed. But what I actually want to do is I want to set it in response to something else being changed. And the something else here is when the tree scroll has its width changed, I would like its width to become the preferred width. You can probably tell from the pref there. This isn't absolutely setting the width. The tree can decide to be a different width if it wants to, um, but we're kind of giving it a suggestion of what we'd like to see it be. And I would actually like to see it be the tree scrolls width, which happens to be a read-only double property. So I can't set this one, but I can make it so that anytime this one changes now, its value will be stored in pref width. And so you can kind of see this symbolic method here. It looks like a little operator. It looks like an arrow pointing to the left that says we're going to store values from the right side into the left side anytime they change. And if I do that in addition to the width, if I do that for the height, we can run this. And now, what you will see is that as I move this around, the tree is resizing to that size. If I get too small, you'll see the scroll bar popped up here. That's the advantage of the pref width, is if I try to go smaller than the tree is allowed to because of the size of its contents, it will automatically add on scroll bars for us there so that we can scroll through the values that we have. Okay, so bindings are an alternate way of doing interactivity. There's actually a lot more to the, the possibility of bindings. These, this is a one-way binding. Because this is read-only, I couldn't do this here, but there's an operation for doing a two-way binding. If I do this, it should probably give me some error that says something about I can't do this with a read-only property. Um, they work very well for, for numeric values. In fact, here's a fun one to do. It turns out you can, for the numeric ones, you can also do math. So by subtracting 10 there, when this runs now, you'll see that the tree, there's a gap here. So it's constantly keeping itself 10 pixels smaller. I can also do division and multiplication. 
it's not what I want in this case, but the numeric properties and the bindings are actually quite powerful and Scala FX gives you the ability to use these symbolic operators and to do just plain math with these things. I could also subtract off some other properties. So I can do math between multiple numeric properties and just plain numbers and bind that uh, to another value so that it sets itself appropriately and behaves the way that I want as the user changes things in the GUI.